everybody. My name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. It's a beautiful sunny day in Indiana. It's, you know, what's known in the med Midwest as your fake spring because fingers crossed that we don't get um, a big winter. In Indiana, we tend, in Indianapolis, we tend to get a snow around sectional time, which is earlier in March or in early March. Um, everybody say a prayer that there's no snow still um, past the past February 25th. That will get everybody home from our February 24th wedding that we have coming up. But for today, the, but for today, the birds are out. They're singing. Um, we've seen the sun for a couple of days in a row, which is January. We hardly had any sunny days at all. So today's card's a little bit inspired by the smells, the sounds, and the anticipation of spring. So before I get going on the card, I am going to show you these two cards. These, If you go watch these tutorials, if you've missed them, if you're in Card Club, this is your first project, and you can add on the alternate set. This month, we do have an alternate set. It's Inspirational Sketches. I was gonna use it on today's card. There's so many fun stamps in these two sets that it was a little bit difficult to decide what I wanted to do. But you can go watch this one if you wanna see that. And then today I'm using Everyday Details, which is our club um, set this month. Today's project is not a club project, um, but it's one that you would easily be able to do if you um, get this from club. So this one will explain all about my online card club to you if you're interested in it. And I'm using the bundle. I'm using the dies. Um, I don't have them out, but you can see them online or you can go to one of those other videos. If you go to my website, you can see the link or down under, underneath the YouTube videos. As long as the products are live, then 90% of the time I have the um, things I use down there and you can just click on them and see them. But then I'm also going to use, oh no, I bet I don't know what they're called. No, I don't. Hang on just a second. <laughs> I realized with the cellophane gone, uh, well, I could have probably guessed. They're gold foiled flowers, gold foiled flowers, cards, and envelopes. And you get 10 cards and 10 envelopes. They are beautiful. And I'm going to do um, a video with the envelopes on its own. So you'll want to um, come back and watch that. But look how pretty the cards are. So you can use them 10 and 10, or you can um, cut these apart and use them as card fronts because you can see that the card, the whole entire card, it's already pre-scored for you, has this lovely gold pattern on it. So if you don't want to use it all on cards, you could mount this on vanilla and you just have more of these than you would of the beautiful envelopes, but they're so pretty. They're vanilla based. I love a good vanilla card. It always tones it down a little bit. I guess I don't need the envelope for this one, but you are gonna wanna see what I did with the envelope in the next one. Hopefully it gets filmed soon. So we are going to, let's start by stamping. So I'm gonna use this and then I just have a piece of vanilla. So I'm gonna use vanilla and then this is one of the dies after I stamp it. And then this is, you could use any of our gold metallics. They would all look pretty. This um, distressed gold is the one I had laying close enough for me to reach. So this is another die. You can see that they get gradually larger in size. So let's stamp. And I do have all the proper tools, but I'm kind of in a hurry these days, so I don't have my embossing tools. Um, oh, I do see it. It's buried under some stuff to my right, but there is a, a tray that you can get to do this. I'm just gonna go old school and use a piece of paper. So I'm gonna ink it with my Versamark. I just have the nest here. You wanna push hard, but not so hard that you catch the edges. The first time I did it, I did get a couple of edges. And then I'm gonna emboss it in gold. So just pour your gold powder on here. The best thing about embossing powder is if you mess up, you can just scrape it all off and stamp and start again, right? So you wanna make sure that you don't have any gold powder where it's not supposed to be gold powder because this is a pretty intricate design. So let me heat this. You just wanna heat it till it turns metallic gold. Right, You can see right now it's dusty. Just hold it in one spot. Once the, gun, the heating tool gets hot, then it goes faster. So then just move it along, kinda of aim it in the sun or in your lights if it's been, a, if it's gray where you are, if it goes back to being gray here. I have my in-person camp this Friday, which it's, we just had camp, 
but I gotta get it in before wedding stuff before I take the time off. So this is gonna be a card we do at camp. So it's all nice and shiny and beautiful and then just kind of tilt it because if anything didn't melt, then when you go to um, paint it in a second, it will just rub right off. So I'm going to paint. I picked colors of, of Robin's eggs. So let's start with pecan. I'm gonna use my water painter. And I just grabbed whichever one. It's not the largest, but it's also not the smallest. Then I have a tissue here to kind of get my water out. So I'm gonna grab some pecan and just kind of swish it through the nest here. There's enough um, twigs in the embossing powder that you don't have to be super fancy about it. So just kind of swish it along. Let me take my glasses off. It's so sunny that the sun's reflecting on it with my studio lights. As you can see, I've just put my ink in my palette there. That I did that by squishing the top onto the base of the stamp. You can always refill, put a little bit of refill in there if you want to do it that way. So now I've given it one coat. And then I'm going to go back and you can kind of see that there are separations in the nest. Now I'm going to take the tip and I'm going to get some darker pecan where I don't have as much water mixed in it. And then I'm just going to add a couple of highlights. They don't have to be everywhere. Just so there's a couple of spots that are a little bit darker than others. And it really adds a lot to your design if you do this. I'll put some up close pictures on my website and then you can go look at this. I know it was sometimes with the metallic, it's harder to see on screen. So that's our pecan. We're going to need all the pads again, so I'm not going to shut them all the way. And then there are some leaves in here. I'm not going to clean this. For one, the leaves are tiny and I'm using garden green for the other. So garden green is a strong green. It doesn't need to have all that um, pecan out. But if I make water come out of this, it makes the tip a little bit big and these literally are tiny little leaves. So I'm just going to tap this and you can see the green overtook the brown. It's partly because you can tell in this one, I did not squish it. I added refill at some point. It was not today. But when you add the refill to your lids, it stays in there. It doesn't dry up as long as you shut your lids. And even if it did dry up, the water would reactivate it when you went to paint. I liked this nice garden green. Probably a spring color would be more lemon lime twist, but I really wanted it to pop off that gold. Now I am gonna take my brush now. And just make sure that it doesn't have a lot of green on it. So now I'm gonna start with Coastal Cabana. I want these to look like Robin's eggs. So we have Coastal Cabana, which will kind of give us a nice bright base. Now, if you're using watercolor cardstock, you could really put a lot of water on this. This is vanilla, and so if you go too far, then your paper will pill. So it's not bad because these are tiny little designs. So for the Coastal Cabana, I'm just doing the little swoop through where it has the highlights from the stamp. And it's better if when you don't use watercolor cardstock if you kind of do it in layers. That way you don't have to mush your cardstock. So there's our Coastal Cabana. And let's do pool party, which pool party is one of those. And this, you can tell the difference. Sometimes if I'm going to do a big design, then I go ahead and um, squish it in here. So now I can just pull this pool party and I'm going to get the rest of it and kind of leave a little bit of space. At the end, we're going to add those speckles that Robin's eggs have on them. Now you can't use blends because you can't use blends with embossing powder because it will erase your embossing. So if you want to use blends, then just stamp this in, um, stays on, or not stays on, can't use stays on with blends in your memento. Now I'm gonna use Azure Afternoon. I haven't used this color very often. In fact, when I went to do this one, there was nothing, there was a clean lid. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of this and I didn't clean my pool party because again, I'm going to a much stronger color. 
And I'm just gonna kind of add this right along here. It's such a fun set and it's very springy. Now as it's working its way off, I'm just gonna kind of dab it on here. between these two brighter green blue, the brighter Coastal Cabana, which has a tinge of green, and the Pool Party has a tinge of green, but when you put the Azura on there, it just brightens it right up. I'm done with this. I didn't wanna make my card itself too bright. So now I'm going to take the card itself. I'm gonna give this a second to dry, and once it's dry, then I can put it through here, but I don't wanna put it through my machine wet. I'm gonna grab my card. I'm not gonna score it yet. I like to be able to color the whole thing. So I'm going to start with my pecan pie. We're just going to give this background a really fun um, rainbow of spring colors instead of just having it be vanilla. You could leave it just vanilla if you like that. So I'm going to do my pecan just down here in the corner. And I need to remember when I'm done filming that I need to ink all of these before they use it at camp because they're already getting a little dry. I've done a lot of sponging and brayering recently. So I want not a whole lot of the pecan, but enough that it shows because it goes with the nest. And then I'm just going to kind of bring it back here since it didn't really go that whole way. So there's our pecan. Now let's, I'm going to do them in the same order. Now I'm going to get a little bit of the green. along here. As long as you keep moving your brush, then you shouldn't get any of the splotches. And it also helps because this paper has that foiling on it. So the ink that goes onto the foiling stays wet and it comes back off when you go around. Got that. Now let's do our Coastal Cabana. And for this one, I'm just going to use the same blue brush because they're not that different of colors. Let's get some Coastal Cabana. If you find that, like, when you do your blending brushes and you're like, I'm not getting any color, you have to push on here and you have to, like, make sure you're picking up ink. So this is nice and bright. Part of the reason I didn't do the azure on here is because then the eggs have some one other color that the card itself doesn't have, and it really makes them pop. There's that little swoop, and you can see I'm leaving some of this on the back. It will end up not having any color on it. Now let's get our pool party. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here and get out any Coastal Cabana that's like right on top. And again, on the lighter colors especially, make sure you're picking up a nice amount of ink. See, I pressed and pressed, although mine do need to be um, re-inked in, in the most terrible way. Here, let's do this. And then I'm just gonna leave just a little bit on this one. I didn't do that on my other one, and then when I was done, I wish I'd left a hint of vanilla on the front. Now you can take a tissue and when you wipe it back off, then it'll get any ink that's still on top of those emboss the gold boiling. So super pretty. And now when you fold this, you'll want to use your bone folder unless you wait for it to all the way dry. Otherwise you'll have some ink on your hands. I'm sure I already have ink on my hands because this was not the best card to start my day with. But isn't that pretty? So pretty. I'm going to put these through my embossing machine. Now, when I chose which ones to use for this, when you do the circles, I wanted to make, I wanted this one on here because I wanted to have a gold layer. So this does the polka dots. This one just cuts out a circle. 
So this is just whatever it is. Isn't that pretty on there? But then with the next size down, it cuts two layers of circles. So it is gonna cut into your design a little bit, but that's okay because it gives you a frame. So you can see I lost that many leaves, which is kind of sad because they were pretty and they, I painted them well. You know how that goes. But you get the design on here and you don't wanna have, um, I didn't, I didn't want to lose my gold thing. And I thought about doing this and doing another one gold so I could lay it in there. But I didn't want a square either. I wanted the round for the eggs. So, just have to sacrifice a little leaf or two on your design. All right, let's put this together. So, I'm going to use the, this month in card club. I'm hope, crossing my fingers that I get full spools for everybody. I'm getting close of the celebration pool party ribbon. Otherwise, they'll get three quarters, two thirds of a spool until I have enough that everybody gets some. Um, but this is the free celebration ribbon in pool party, which is of course a color we just used. So I'm just gonna tie a little bow. The ribbon ties nicely, it makes a nice flat ribbon. So that, whoops, <laughs> I shouldn't talk while I'm doing it. I just let it snap right back out of there because I looked away for a second. So it starts out bigger than what you want it to be. When you pull it through, kind of make sure that the other loop is not twisted. So we have that. And see now that's too big. We don't want it to overwhelm our nest. So just keep pulling it down. And as you pull it down, go back and pull this tight. So then it gets a little bit bigger again and then pull it. I think I did it three times last time you want the center to stay tight. You want these to stay nice and flipped the way you want them flipped. And then you have a nice flat ribbon. So I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna add this to the, way to the bottom. With my seal. You could use glue, you just have to wait a second for it to dry. And I'm gonna add some. I'm gonna go ahead and put all the glue on here so I can just stick it on my design. So fold this over. Um, it's always a trick when you do a circle because of course it doesn't really go straight. It wants to go like you want it to lay so it still keeps that circle shape. So that's why I just have this back here. And then you can stick that in some and trim this off. I didn't use any dimensionals on this card because I wanted the texture to kind of be the ribbon and the little bit of nest we're gonna put on here in a second. So just put this down here in the corner. And I, I like it better that I've left some of the vanilla on this one. And kind of adjust your bow. Now I'm gonna take this, it's gonna slide in. It doesn't matter exactly where, and in fact, I may trim that off if I want it to go. I'll just do it, trim it off now. Nobody's gonna see it because we're gonna shove this down into the ribbon. But it's easier to do the next step with our ribbon already attached. So I have that there. I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive. You could also use glue for this. And if you used glue, go ahead and stick it to your card and then do this next. So if you're in card club, you know, last month, was it January? I think so. We didn't have any ribbon because, no, it was December. It was December card club because we had embossing, we used embossing paste. Instead of getting a spool of ribbon, they got embossing paste. So I made ribbon and we had the um, light and airy paper. So I just made little bits of nest. I just pretended I was mama bird out there building a nest. So what I did was I took this sheet of, this is an off cut from something obviously, and I just trimmed as thin as I could some papers. And you don't need this many. You could, it would look really cool if you had a ton. I'm too busy to put a ton on here. So you take this and then just take your bone folder and ever so gently, you can see it breaks start just kind of bending it over and you can see it start to separate. This one separated quickly. And you don't need them to be this long, so it's okay when it breaks. And see how it does this? So I'm gonna grab this and I'm just gonna start adding little bits to my nest. And then at the end, I will add a dab of glue to make sure it all stayed. Here's another little one. I just like them to have a little bit of curl. So when we didn't have ribbon, if you don't have ribbon that will match your stuff, you can always curl some paper. I kind of got the idea because it was December and I was wrapping packages and you know, the curling ribbon and your scissors and you just do this. And I thought, hmm, 
I should do that with our ribbon. And I thought, well, our ribbon's almost always fabric. Or if it's not, it's like leather, the leather trim we have right now, which really wouldn't work for this to do it. So when you get one that's a, that does stay together, you can kind of just keep it. I'll just force it on there. I'll do one more. Oh, here's some over here from the first part I did. We'll go with these little pieces because you don't need the big ones. Just adds a little bit more like reality, I guess, to the card. This one's too long. I'm just going to snap it. And then we'll use the other half over here. That looks pretty good. You can always add one on after if you get it all on here. I'm going to put my adhesive here. And then, like I said, take a drop of glue and add it there. But remember, we cut that, so we just need to tuck it down in the ribbon. And then nobody knows that the rest of our circle is gone. It just makes it a whole lot easier than trying to get it under the bow. So I have this, it kind of all goes up. It lasts, uh, the cards that I did in December, and I know those of you in Card Club, this stays on for a long time. Now I wanted, remember they're Robin's eggs and they have the little speckles. So I took my dark copper clay, you could use any color. And grab your bone folder. And I'm gonna aim for this first little bit so I get some Splatters right there. And then to just make the rest of it feel a little robin eggy, just add those. But look, now I have little speckles on my eggs. And then for the embellishments, again, these are celebration um, till the end of February or while supplies last. So you have a couple more weeks. I don't even want to think about the end of February because then that means the wedding's over. But they have the um, pool party and the pecan which I didn't even know I was using these when I designed the card. So let's do uh, we'll do two of the pecan to start and two of the pool party. And then I think I'll do a pecan over here. You can always do one more, but I like that. I want my eggs really to be the focal point. There you go. It's really an easy card and it's partly because the beautiful paper does all the work for you so see it I think it lightens this up to leave that but the backs are pretty if you want you could take the envelope and stamp just the nest in pecan on the outside but it's already beautiful so it doesn't really have to have anything but super pretty looks like it could be a wedding card huh it could definitely be a Mother's Day or an Easter or a new baby if somebody just found out they're pregnant like before it's not if you don't want to do it for a baby shower but the eggs and a baby so fun so i'll catch you back here later this week and i'll show you what i did with the envelopes